what does fire risk response hats do? At a very basic level, we say that we bridge the space to spatial gap between um, uh, the space instrument that collects the, the information and, and turns it into geospatial information that people can use. The question, of course, is well, why is this necessary and, and what are the things that the software is doing in, in between? First, it's using a lot of ca camera calibration or, or sensor uh, payload uh, yeah, uh, calibration information that is, uh, that is collected um, or, um, by us and our, and our partners earlier in the process. But uh, essentially, we apply this uh, camera calibration information to the process. So we're removing um, effects of, of uh, uh, imperfections, if you like, in the, in the way that the data are being collected. So as an example, we have um, uh, every, every camera or every spaceborne sensor has, a, has some kind of a detector array, excuse me, detector array. And, um, and these detectors, although of high quality, are not perfect and they're not exactly the same as each other. And so what we want is some kind of standardization between the, um, the way one uh, detector behaves as it, as, it, as it relates to the incoming electromagnetic radiation and the next one. And if not the same, then they're, they're not measuring the same um, uh, environmental phenomena in the, in, in the same way. We have to standardize those things. If we don't standardize those things, we end up with visual effects in the imagery like striping that, has to, that have to be compensated for. There's geometry that it has to be compensated for internal to the camera. If we don't do that, then we get things like band misregistration. And so these are things that have to be compensated for. Moving forward, there's a whole bunch of these things. As the, as the satellite is moving forward, the Earth is turning underneath. That all has to be compensated for um, as the image is being collected. Uh, the satellite might be uh, vibrating. Um, the, the, vi the satellite might be vibrating because of of uh, certain um, instruments inside the, uh, the satellite that are controlling the attitude of the, of, the, of the satellite, the point where the satellite is pointing or where the sensors are pointing. Um, uh, any, any sort of change like that can result in a vibration that can propagate into the image and uh, result in poor quality. And all these things have to be compensated for. Um, oh, an additional um, uh, factor is the, is the internal thermal stability of the, of the, of the camera. Um, uh, you know, the, the satellite is orbiting the Earth. Uh, it, it, it images during uh, daylight and um, or when the sun is illuminating the Earth. But the other, when it goes around the other side, it's in darkness, and the, the whole satellite and the and the sensor payload becomes cool, and then it comes across the North Pole usually, and uh, and then comes into sunlight, and then the whole thing heats up, and that affects the way that these these sensor um, uh, arrays behave. That has to be compensated for. Then we have. Uh, the problem of the Earth being not flat, it's round, and the fact that the Earth is bumpy, not smooth, and, and, and we have to compensate for all those things in the process of orthorectification to move all the pixels to their true map location. All of these things are strung together in a single process, um, and that essentially is what Far Earth does. So we start with very noisy, very poorly positioned, radiometrically imbalanced imagery, and we turn it into um, a product that uh, downstream users can use.